Welcome to Biomed Global. In this video, we are going to talk about shuttle vector or shuttle plasmids. So I presume that you know what is a plasmid. So a plasmid basically has three major components that is the origin of replication, antibiotic resistance, and multiple cloning sites. And uh, you are aware of the differences between a plasmid and vectors. So plasmids are the small circular DNA which are mainly found in nature. Uh, and once we make changes through molecular means in these plasmids, we call them as vectors. This video is specifically about a shuttle vector and a shuttle vector has the capability to propagate, replicate in two different host species like bacteria and yeast. It could be uh, other uh, living organisms also, like there are shuttle vectors that can transfer DNA into plant and also into animal cell lines. So, I mean, how these shuttle vectors work? So here is an example of a shuttle vector, and this shuttle vector can transfer its genetic material into bacteria as well as yeast, and what it should have. So if it can transfer its DNA into bacteria and yeast, it should have the origin of replication for uh, bacteria, it should have selectable marks specifically for the bacteria, and here it is in this vector bacteria origin of replication and bacterial selectable marker and it should also have yeast replication component that is a yeast selectable marker and yeast origin of replication and beside this these shuttle vectors should have uh, certain other elements which are required for their replication in yeast like uh, autonomous replicating sequences or ARS and G centromere sequences. So far we have been talking about that plasmids are extra chromosomal segments of DNA which are circular in nature. But now I want to tell you that plasmids can also be linear also and uh, the linear plasmid where they are found they are found in eukaryotic cell and as you know eukaryotic cell has a nucleus so obviously the plasmid will be a cytoplasmic one until and up till it's the integrating one that can go into the nucleus and integrate in the genomic dna so regarding yeast yeast have both linear as well as circular plasmids most of the shuttle vectors described in molecular biology and used in genetic engineering, they are from Saccharomyces cerevisiae, which is a yeast. And uh, there are three types of these uh, shuttle vectors from yeast, uh, and these are centromeric plasmids, episomal plasmid, and integrating plasmids. So a brief about the three type of G shuttle vector. The G centromeric plasmids, they use cell endogenous replication and chromosome segregation system. They are sometimes known as G mini chromosomes also. They are very low in copy number and mainly they have just single copy. And these centromeric plasmids are centromeric shuttle vector. They have two characteristic sequences. One is autonomously replicating sequences, ARS. Uh, these are the sites where DNA replication is initiated, and the other one is a centromeric sequences. The second one, yeast episomal plasmids, they are commonly found in Saccharomyces cerevisiae strain, both in wild type and laboratory adopted strain. And based on its contour size, it is mainly known as two micron plasmid also. Uh, these plasmids are high copy number plasmid uh, and the copy number can go beyond 50 and can also be regulated. And uh, this plasmid in yeast is considered as a cryptic plasmid. 
as it does not confer any obvious advantage to the host as uh, is the case of bacterial plasmid. There are two major classes of uh, yeast abysmal plasmid and uh, these are, uh, they differ in the insertion of bacterial plasmid sequence in appropriate selection marker into the complete endogenous 2 micron plasmid. The third one is uh, yeast integrating plasmids. So yeast integrating plasmid, they are integrated into the chromosome. And integration is where homologous recombination and a 30 base homologous targeting sequences is required for integration. And it varies in different G strain. And once integrated, uh, this plasmid replicate as a part of the chromosome. And obviously, because uh, these plasmids do not have to replicate independently, so they uh, get into the chromosome, so they do not have origin of replication. Now, the question is, what are the benefits of uh, developing or using shuttle vectors? So, there are several answers, but few to mention are that shuttle vectors are mainly originated from yeast which is a eukaryotic organism like plants and animals. And a bacterial vector system, they lack post-translational modification as observed in eukaryotic organism. However, shuttle vector due to their capability to replicate in Gs, uh, which is a eukaryotic cell, can be used to study post-translational modification like glycosylation, glycosylation and several other. Basically, the science of gene therapy has benefited a lot from the shuttle vector system. So in some other video, I will be talking about retroviral vector, which are also a class of shuttle vector. As the shuttle vector can also be transformed into mammalian cells for observing their expression and appropriate protein folding. So these vectors have great importance uh, in molecular biology as well as human health sciences. Thank you for watching this video. Kindly subscribe to our channels for future informative videos. We have two channels, Biomed Global and ScienceLiteracy.net. Thank you and all the best.